Oh, welcome to my camp here in Clarence. Uh, I had a pretty good ride all the way here. Uh, yeah, it was uh, not too long. I think it took uh, just uh, about the five and a half hours uh, from home to get here. Around 380 kilometers. Did uh, quite a good road. There uh, was no problems on the way. It was actually very nice riding, a lot of uh, cosmos fields. Yeah, I want to uh, apologize for the audio. I just uh, realized that the audio is not usable from the GoPro, so I will have to uh, record audio separately afterwards. But in this way, it will actually be better. I will be able to uh, add much more information. Yeah, so I'm uh, staying at the uh, Clarence Backpackers. Just a uh, very nice and uh, secluded uh, way at the back of town. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very nice and quiet here as well. Uh, very nicely organized. There's everything included here. Very big kitchen with all the utensils. Uh, a lot of uh, wood that you could use as well if you want to make a pie. Yeah, it's uh, really a uh, nice. So uh yeah. Ready to go. Yes, uh, the quaint little town of Clarence is uh, located just between the Maluti Mountains, just uh, outside the border of uh, the Lesotho which is a independent uh, country in the middle of South Africa. And it's also called uh, the Jewel of the Free State. And uh, it was uh, established in uh, 1912 after uh, Clarence in Switzerland because of uh, Paul Kruger, who was the president of the South African Republic. At the time, he declared the war on the Basutu leader, Mushweshwe after uh, five Dutch farmers were murdered in uh, 1865. So, uh, Paul Kruger, uh, he also spent his last uh, days in exile in uh, Switzerland in the little village of uh, Clarence and that's why this Clarence was also named after uh, the Swiss village. In yeah, so uh, Clarence is a real artist's haven. A lot of uh, local artists from South Africa like to uh, come to the area and get inspiration from the mountains and then uh, set up uh, little shops here as well where they can sell their uh, local made art uh, yeah, a lot of uh, paintings as well of the beautiful Maluti mountains of the local Basutu people uh, very beautiful uh, handmade art for sale uh, there's also a lot of these uh, local Basutu blankets that you could buy. Uh, yeah, real handmade uh, wool blankets. And uh, also antique furniture that people come and uh, restore here and uh, try to sell as well for a little bit extra money. Then, of course, my favorite shops here in town is the Clarence Bakery. They always have uh, freshly baked uh, pies here, or so delicious. And uh, you can get uh, nicely baked fresh rolls. And then, uh, of course, for uh, a bit later in the afternoon, there's also the Clarence Brewery. They uh, brew their own local beers. Yeah, so delicious. Golden Gate Highlands National Park is located in Free State, uh, in South Africa, in the middle of South Africa near the Lesotho border. It covers an area of about 340 square kilometers and uh, its notable features are its uh, golden deeply eroded sandstone cliffs and outcrops, especially the Brandweg rock near the entrance of the park. Another uh, feature of the area is the numerous caves and shelters displaying sun rock paintings. Wildlife Featured at the park includes uh, mongooses, eland, zebras, and over 100 bird species. 
It is the free state's only national park and is more famous for the beauty of its landscape than for its wildlife. Numerous paleontology finds have been made in the park, including dinosaur eggs and skeletons. In 1875, a farmer called Jane R. van Rienen and his wife stopped here as they traveled to the new farm in Vierland. He named the location Golden Gate when he saw the last rays of the setting sun falling on the cliffs. The park is uh, situated in the Roybergen of the Eastern Free State in the foothills of the Maluti Mountains. The Calidon River forms the southern boundary of the park, as well as the border between the Free State and Lesotho. The highest peak in the park, also in the Free State, is uh, Ribok Kop, which is about uh, 2,829 meters high. Yeah, the park is also located in the eastern highveld region of South Africa and experiences dry, sunny climate from June to August, and it has showers, hail and thunderstorms between October and April. It also has thick snowfalls in the winter. The park has rel relatively high rainfall of about 800 millimeters in per year. And the park is an area of rich high felt and montane grassland flora. It has more than 60 grass species and a large variety of bulbs and herbs. Each of these species has its own flowering time, meaning that felt flowers can be seen throughout the summer. Ohot is favorite habitat of beetles and 117 species occur on these trees in the park. There are also many Lombardi poplar trees and weeping willows in the park which were introduced species but were kept because of their cultural and historic connection with the Eastern Free State. This is a beautiful little waterfall and swimming spot. Just behind the accommodation here at the Golden Gate National Park. Uh, not many people know about it, but I uh, must be if you actually do stay at the park, then you can uh, easily come and enjoy this uh, swimming spot. Here comes the dinosaur center. Building a dinosaur center. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an exhibition for uh, local visitors because of the uh, significance of uh, uh, fossilized uh, dinosaur eggs that they actually found in the park. So uh, now I'm going to go to the Vulture Hide, or also called the uh, Vulture Restaurant. It's normally a place uh, where they would uh, put out carcasses of uh, old cows or uh, goats or uh, donkeys or horses or so, some animals that might have died of natural causes on uh, local farmers' uh, farms. They are then uh, donated uh, to the park so that they could feed these uh, bearded vultures. Uh, they are also called uh, Lammergeier, uh, it's a German word, because uh, these bearded vultures are actually also very common in uh, the Pyrenees and uh, the Alps. They uh, normally reside uh, yeah, over 2000 meters high and are uh, not very common to find below 1000 meters in sea level. Yeah, this uh, is Animals are uh, actually very distinct because uh, most of their uh, diet actually consists of bone. Mostly 70 to 90 percent of the bones they eat uh, is actually uh, yeah, dedicated to the marrow inside the bones. So what these birds do is that they pick up a piece of bone, fly high with it and drop it on a piece of rock and let it split open and then they will pick up the pieces of uh, uh, matter that is uh, scattered around. This bird is normally about 94 to 125 centimeters uh, high and has a wingspan of about 2.3 until 2.8 meters. They are unfortunately very endangered, especially in South Africa, uh, because they only live on very high uh, mountainous areas and uh, there is not much um, food for them available.
Yeah, over here I was planning on going up to the hide, but uh, just as I was about to turn off uh, to go into the hide, I saw a, a very, very large uh, wingspan bird hovering in the sky. And uh, just as I came to a stop there, the bearded vulture came hovering over me, coming to look uh, what is uh, yeah, entering his territory. That was a really a special moment. Uh, geology of the park provides a very visual textbook example of South Africa's geological history. Sandstone formations in the park form the upper part of the Karoo supergroup. Now, this uh, period had a lot of uh, deposition uh, yeah, happening in this area. And during the time of this deposition, the climate of the area of the park that was covered was becoming progressively drier until the arid desert conditions set in, resulting in a land of dunes and sandy desert with occasional scattered oases. The deposition of the sandstone ended with lava flowed out over the desert 190 million years ago. Uh, caused actually that uh, the lava that flowed over the sand uh, hardened much harder, and uh, that's why the sandstone eroded much quicker. And the hardened lava forms this uh, mushroom shaped rocks over there. This pink rock in front of us is called the uh, famous Brandwach rock. Brandwach is actually a lookout, it would normally be on a higher point. Somebody taking the lookout for uh, the enemy, also called the Brandwach. There is a very beautiful hiking trail walking up to the top of this Brandwach, uh, which you can reach also uh, quite easily and uh, have a very beautiful view over the whole area. When you're uh, there at the top, you will just be over 2,000 meters above the sea level. Yeah, so that was the end of the Golden Gate National Park. And like I said, it's uh, the Free State only national park and it's uh, very easily uh, reachable from uh, yeah, areas around from Bloemfontein or from Johannesburg and a very beautiful ride to come and uh, explore the middle of our country. Yeah, from here on I'm going back to Clarence. I'm going to stop over at the Clarence Brewery and get myself a beer or two for tonight. Yeah, so I'm going to have a little braai there next to my tent, enjoy a little beer yeah, and probably go to sleep quite early. Uh, tomorrow is also another long day. I'm going to go to uh, Alival North to visit my auntie. I haven't seen my auntie in 27 years, so that's also going to be a good uh, trip. And it's not too long of a drive, around uh, 350 kilometers. So it should probably also take me about uh, five hours, including some stops on the way. Here we are back in Clarence. Uh, this uh, town has got so many nice shops here. Uh, very beautiful accommodations. And so many nice coffee shops where you can uh, get artisan coffees. Also many homemade delicacies. Yeah, homemade jams and uh, rusks and uh, cookies. Yeah, so thank you for joining me in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, also, uh, click on subscribe and uh, the notification button. You will get notifications when I upload some new videos. Thank you for watching. And